Welcome back to the Sports Source. This segment brought to you by Parkside Cabin Rentals. No one has more cabin options in the Smokies than Parkside Cabin Rentals. The Ogle family's just got uh, cabins all over the place. They take great care of them. They are really stacked and loaded with just any kind of entertainment option you could want. Comfortable, beautiful, including a new one called City Bear. If you go to their website and search City Bear, it's completely renovated. Four beds, three baths. It is in downtown Gatlinburg. You don't find these kinds of cabins in downtown Gatlinburg, free parking in downtown Gatlinburg, book it quick. It's filling up City Bear, parksidecabinrentals.com. All right, let me show you a few of the bests versus Bama. Now, look, I know I'm forgetting some. These were off the top of my head at about 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning, so I apologize. But Johnny Butler's run in 39. Tim Priest, three interceptions in 1970. Dale Jones, incredible interception in 85. Everybody remembers Peyton Manning to Joey Kent in 95. Johnny Jones run in 83. Jalen Hyatt, 207 yards, school record five touchdowns in 2022. Sterling, I said it earlier, nobody hates Alabama like you do. It's, it's all love when it comes to Sterling, except for Alabama. Except this week. For him to do that against Alabama, kids of kids will be talking about that game the way we're talking about Johnny Butler today. An awesome, legendary performance by that young man. I mean, to actually do it on the stage that would happen yesterday, the way he did it, the precise route running, the fact that he caught the ball when at the precise time he did, because some couple of times was the, the, the DB, he wasn't that much open, but the hand timing of getting catching the ball, I mean, and then when he pulled away on that dart that uh, Hooker hit him with down the middle and make rack after the catch, I mean, it, it, it took a lot to get him there. You know, between uh, Coach Golish getting things together, I'm just going to cover yep. as far as getting the matchups, other people running precise routes to make his read as clean as it was. With, and Fett and Prince, Princeton Fent, here's a guy that has played for three head coaches and had the day he had yesterday, which I think had a lot to do with Hyatt getting open and having an opportunity to maximize. What Hyatt did yesterday is a performance for the ages, and he should be proud of what he did, and I'm excited to see what he does in the future. For ten, Robert Nealon made a comment like this where you know what you got when a Tennessee guy goes up against Alabama. Yeah. Anybody who has those kind of games get remembered. We know that. To do it against Alabama, Jalen Hyatt has now put himself in, in just the mountaintop in terms of Tennessee. It was great stuff. Yes. Daniel Hood, who couldn't be with us today, Texted me something last night. He said, you got it. I hope all fans are enjoying this. In two years, when we're winning all the time, fans won't get these feelings every game. And he jokingly said, Alabama never gets to storm the field, which I thought was a good point. And the fact that you do have to savor these games, just very quickly, I didn't tell my director I was going to bring this out, but that's close enough. You don't need to zoom in on this. That's the cover of the Knoxville News Sentinel when Tennessee beat Alabama and, and snapped the 11-game streak in 1982. I was there with my dad as a little boy, and this memory is still vibrant in my mind. And for you kids out there today who were there yesterday, I know everything's digital now. You can't save the ticket. It's not paper. Newspaper, everybody's online. Print something. Save it. File it away. Because someday people are going to be talking about that game the way, we're the way we're talking about all those past games. Remember that, savor it, and enjoy it. Especially since there's no guarantee when you beat Alabama, you just keep rolling. And that's where we throw to the stats that matter and Josh Ward. And again, I will say, Josh didn't ask for this assignment, but he's good enough man to take it. So send your ugly emails to me. Josh Ward? <laughs> We'll let you handle this one. Yeah, John, my nickname is going to be Wah Wah Wood, yeah. I think, <laughs> after this segment. But this is new territory, at least currently for Tennessee. So here's the challenge for Josh Heupel as we look at these numbers, these past numbers from regular season wins against Alabama with Nick Saban as the head coach. Uh, it has not happened often where regular season losses have occurred for Saban's teams. Only eight teams have beaten Alabama in the regular season since 2012. Think about that. So. Here is the challenge Tennessee now faces as Tennessee is going to move up in the polls and get more attention, become the hunted from other teams. Other teams that beat Alabama had a difficult time and some went on to have great success. But look in the middle of that run, Ole Miss, Ole Miss, Auburn, Auburn, four uh, straight uh, losses in the regular season for Alabama against teams that were led by their offense. In 2015, Ole Miss had the number one scoring offense in the SEC, but also managed 
to lose to Florida, lost to Memphis. So you're thinking, well, the schedule lightens up. We're going to take care of business. Tennessee should take care of business against teams like Kentucky, like South Carolina. But we've also spent some time today talking about Tennessee's defensive challenges. So part of the challenge for Josh Heupel now will be to make sure that his team is focused, is prepared for teams that won't be up to the task. Georgia's removed from this conversation. Tennessee will be mentally locked into that game. But in a couple of weeks, when Will Levis comes to town and everybody's talking about how easy it will be for Tennessee, Josh Heupel will be focused on making sure his team is prepared. Uh, the positive I would add to this to close it out is that you do have UT Martin coming up. So it's a little extra time to get Cedric Tillman right, to get some defensive backs right, and to allow your team to celebrate a little bit without having to immediately turn around and face an SEC team. You get a tune-up against UT Martin before you then do have to lock in against Kentucky. Great point, Josh. Uh, the SEC just doesn't make it easy down the stretch. So just because you beat an Alabama, remember, Missouri went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Georgia a couple weeks ago. You just never know. you got to keep your head on straight and pay attention to it. That 82 Tennessee win over Alabama I mentioned, Johnny Majors, brought a ladder over for his team, and he had like a mattress or some sort of foam pillows and everything on the field, and every player went up and jumped off of cloud nine to get their head straight. All right, Alabama's over. Let's get focused. And they then went out and lost to Georgia Tech the very next week. So if you're Tennessee, if you're a Tennessee fan and you're thinking, this is smooth sailing, it may not be. It wasn't for a lot of those teams who thought it would be smooth sailing. So you just got to keep, uh, keep it in focus that, that this season isn't over yet. Okay, now that we got that out of the way, let's talk about the playoff picture. Titles, bowl games. Well, you got, if we're going to show the dark side of the coin, we got to show the bright, shiny side, the sunshine side of the coin. That's next. We got some scenarios for you. Come on back on the sports source.